Hello, welcome to Code Zero, a series of videos that explores the world of code. My name is Pragma. Have a great time learning about code. Hello, welcome to Code Zero, and thank you, Pragma, for that introduction. I am Dr. Abstract here at ZimJS.com. Let's dig into the code again and see where we were in the last Code Zero, where we were talking about the documentation. We talked about what kinds of things we can do to our objects that we have on stage. And we wanted to try a bunch of things, but we only got to try the drag. <laughs> Oh, well, here we were trying to get back into the code, and what did we do? We looked at the documentation. Uh, well, patience, my dears, patience. So, we're, we've made a circle, we've colored it red, and we've set it to drag. Let's see what that looks like in a browser. Just as a quick review. Woo, that's a big browser. There it is, a circle that we're dragging. Now, when we were in the documentation, and the documentation can be found out on the Zim site under Docs, just a quick click here, it was broken down into sections of various commands that we can use. So if you missed the last code zero, you should check that out. Under the code section here, if we scroll down in the code section, there's the template. Um, there's various tutorials. Here, let's just open this up a bit. There's tools that we can use. There's a bit on accessibility, the various libraries that are available. And then we arrive at this section, Organization. And this section called Organization tells you all about how the documents are organized with little examples and a little description. It's basically what we just talked about in the code zero, except it's all typed out here if you wanted to read about that. So this is what the different sections are doing. Okay, uh, it's followed by a bunch of treats, things that Zim can do that maybe other places don't do, and then um, as well as what CreateJS can do, and indeed what JavaScript can do that not all other programming languages can do. But that's all a little bit advanced, so let's leave that for some other day. Now, when we were out in the documentation, I perhaps tempted you with a dial. Ooh, dials are kind of neat. We don't see dials all the time in our computer world, but Zim has a dial. So let's put a dial on the stage, and the dial has an event that we can find out when the dial changes, and when the dial changes, we'll make the circle bigger or smaller. As a matter of fact, if we're gonna get a dial on the stage, we might wanna make start it off with the circle a bit smaller than it is already. <laughs> okay, so let's go into the code and try that out. First of all, that's how big the circle is right here, and I don't know if you remember what that's called. Remember what these are called? Well, specifically that's a number and this is a string. Um, but it's all, they're also called parameters because we're passing them into the circle. So these are with parameters. A little bit of an odd word to parameters. Para means next to meters. Not sure. It's sort of a uh, <laughs> we'll see, attributes is another word that is used. Attributes, that's going to go off the screen, isn't it? Attributes, Ooh, just barely makes it. Or attributes. Ah, there we go. <laughs> There's the scroll. <laughs> just, see, I told you, just a little bit of a scroll. Mini scroll. So attributes, uh, we might recognize that's um, uh, sort of properties of something. And indeed, that's what it is, really. Uh, we pass these in here, and then they get set as properties. So perhaps that's what para meaning next to. We're not going directly into it and setting the properties, but these are uh, <laughs> sort of off to the side and passing them in. <laughs> so uh, a representation. Okay, so great. Uh, oh, we were going to make that smaller. Yes, I knew there was something. Uh, and we can also change the radius. So we could go circle oh, dot radius is equal to um, now, 
I mean, that would be silly, but to demonstrate the fact that we can, at a later time, change the radius, uh, I could have done it this way. So circle dot radius is equal to 50. Uh, it was 200, it's 50, let's change the color. I'm going to choose a color that is a frame dot pink. There we go. So uh, this is a property, the pink property of frame. On the Zim frame are stored a whole bunch of colors that are the Zim colors. So rather than the blue that is just a very generic, basic HTML blue, I could choose a frame dot blue and get a different color. Oh, I chose red before. <laughs> it's a very generic red. Now we get, uh, did I save that? <laughs> Pink. Uh, let's see. Circle color. Oh, right, because we had changed it to red down there. So where was it blue before? Uh, yeah, right. Okay. There's where it was blue. Uh, we could do that in either either place if I... <laughs> that must have been the last thing I copied. Teachers, see, please see the teach thing. Um, hey, surprise, surprise. I am making a teach module in Zim, so I, I guess I didn't copy that other thing. Frame dot pink. I'm going to type it out again. Rask, 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 rask. Isn't it early in the morning? Yes, <laughs> these things happen early in the morning. What have I copied and pasted? I can't remember. All right, so uh, circle.color equals frame.pink. Or we could have put the frame.pink in there, but you know, uh, we <laughs> changed it to red afterwards. And that's one thing about code. Okay, so there's the pink circle. That's one thing about code is that it happens in order. If I set a color here and then underneath change the color, then the last thing to have um, been called, that's the, the change here, will, will be the, the active one. Now that's how it usually works. Sometimes code runs out of order, but if you've got a normal statement like this, this is one statement, here's another statement, Here's another statement. These are just a set of statements. They will follow in order. Okay. There are some places, and, and as a matter of fact, we're going to see one of those now, where things don't necessarily follow in order. They wait for something to happen. For instance, when we make our dial, we, we're going to make the dial with code. Ah. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm zoomed in here on the code so much, my scroll wheel goes wah. My scroll wheel goes wah. So we're going to make the dial here. Uh, var dial is equal to, we'll do it the same way that we did the circle, a new zim dot dial, like so. You see how that follows the same format? We make a variable. We give the variable a name. And that means we can use that variable name later, like we use circle later. We use the assignment operator, the equal sign, to put this thing into the variable. It's like putting something into some Tupperware. <laughs> okay, here you go. I just put my rice in my Tupperware, and I put a label on the Tupperware that says rice. And later, I can access it. All right, so there's our new dial. This is where our parameters will go. Uh, we'll just leave it for now, though. And then we can end that statement. So great, we'll make the circle, then we'll make the dial. These things go in order. But we're going to apply an event to the dial that is a change event. And inside the function of that change event, I have to talk about functions, inside the function of that change event, that code also goes in order, but it happens after this code. And as a matter of fact, it would happen even after other code down here. You know, so it's it's a time-based, it's time-based code. It might happen five minutes from now when somebody changes the dial. <laughs> so uh, within these squiggly brackets of the block of code of a function, you never know exactly when that's going to happen. Okay, so uh, right now, as a matter of fact, we are within a block of code of uh, the squiggly brackets of a function. Look, way up here, this one right here, when the frame is ready, call this function, and between the squiggly brackets, that's why we've indented. We indent between squiggly brackets. There's one squiggly bracket, and if I click on that, I see a little blue line under it. And then I scroll way on down here, 
and there's a little blue line right there, and that's where the end of the ready event is. All of this stuff that is indented, and indent means a tab in this case, indent, it's like a box that kind of makes a box around it. All that stuff, all this code will run when the frame work is ready, when the Zim frame has made a canvas and a stage and centered it on there, fit it on there, and so forth. So uh, this code, once, once we're in those brackets, all this code runs in order, except for the comments, which they don't run at all. Okay, All that code runs in order. But if we happen to make some more squiggly brackets for a variety of things, uh, there's these things called loops. Loops have squiggly brackets, and that does the code over and over again. So in other words, the code would run over and over. Once the loop is done, then it would go to more code. Um, so that also plays around with the order a bit. A conditional. A conditional is an if statement. These sort of look like this here. I'll, I'll type them out. Uh, a function looks like this. Function, round brackets, squiggly brackets. And we usually put the name of the function, or we can put the name of the function. Those squiggly brackets, that's a block of code. A loop is a for. We loop while we do this stuff inside these round brackets, and then we run this code. So this says, these inside of here says the conditions to um, do the loop. And then this is the block of code where we do the loop. There's also a conditional, which is an if statement. And then we find out if that's true. And if that's true, we do that code. Else, we could do other code. So this code may never run because that condition is not true. Maybe only that code runs. This code goes a whole bunch of times. This code runs any time we call the function. So if we call our function called um, talk, like that, and then later down here, we say, please talk, like that, that calls the function, then this function, the code in there would run. If we said talk twice, or if after our dial, we make our dial and then we talk, then uh, this code right here would run here and it would run after we made our dial. So that's more examples of times when the code doesn't always run in order. I'll just comment those out though. So we were making a dial. We have options to put in some parameters there. And on the next line, we better put our dial on the stage so that we can see it, because right now we would not see it. And do you want to see us not seeing it? Okay, let's save that. We've made a dial. We come out to our code. We refresh. I do not see the dial. <laughs> that may be because I have an error. So there's an F12 you can press. No, I have no error. So I just cannot see the dial. And we'll leave our F12 open. So to see the dial, we need to put it on the stage. We say dial.add to, and then the stage, like so. So again, we use the add to method instead of what did we do before? Did we center the, where do we make the circle? There's the circle. Oh, um, we put the circle down here. Maybe I should move that up with the other ones. And uh, let's see, how about we move the dial and all this stuff down underneath our circle being added. Circle.center on the stage. There we go. So we'll keep the things to do with the circle all together. And now uh, we're coming down to where the dial is. And we add it to the stage. We could have centered it on the stage, but then both the dial and the circle would be centered on the stage. Now, remember, and I'm just there at the same place. <laughs> remember what we said about the code going in order? If we make the circle first and center it on the stage first, then the circle will be the first thing on the stage and the dial will be the second thing on the stage, which means the dial will be on top of the circle. Should we see the dial on top of the circle, just as a demonstration? And we refresh. 
<laughs> there it is. As a matter of fact, it looks like our dial is exactly the same size as the circle. <laughs> By default, the dial is 50. So there's the dial. Uh, shall, we, shall we change that up? No, yeah, probably the easiest thing is just to change the radius of the circle. How about we change it to 100? Okay, so we've saved that and refresh here. There's the dial sitting on top of the circle. Oh, we could drag the circle. Oh, did you see what happened there? When we pick up the circle, by default, the circle will come up to the top. So one of the parameters of drag will say, please don't do that on top colon false. So if we say to the, if we say to the drag of the circle on top colon false, then it will not come up to the top as we drag. Do you want to see that since it's come up? Because that's a little bit odd, isn't it? We refresh there as I pick up the circle. The dial seems to disappear because in picking up the circle, we automatically bring it to the top. Usually that's what we want. If we have a bunch of monsters and we're picking them up, we want the monster that we're picking up to come up to the top of all the monsters so that as we drag it around, we can see it. But in some cases, we don't want that. So sorry to jump around a little bit, we uh, will finish the dial in just a second, but let's talk about parameters up here in the drag. So we want to get to a parameter that is called on top, but with parameters, traditionally we do not use the parameter's name. So even though that's the radius, you'll see that there's nothing here that says it's the radius. That's because the parameters are in order, and you can read in the documentation that the first parameter is called radius. But we just put the value in there. We don't put the name of it. And here, the second parameter is the color of the circle. Um, and yet we don't see color. We do see it down here as properties, but not when we're specifying the parameters. Now, to make that work, if you think about it, we need to know the order. For instance, if we want to set the on top parameter to, to, to false to say, please don't come up to the top. I can't just go false like that because the first parameter of the drag is not the on top parameter. The first parameter of the drag, I think, is a rectangle that specifies the bounds. And remember, when we made these parameters, when any coder makes parameters, usually they try and put the most popular parameters first so that as you do popular things, you don't have to go as far in your parameters. You know, imagine if the radius were the last thing, I would have to put all these placeholders in a sense, or put some values into all these things in order, or a bunch of commas. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So if I need to go to the on top, I can't just go comma, 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 false. <laughs> you know, that, that would get me all the way over to where we said on top, or however many things there are in there. <laughs> and truthfully, there are actually quite a few things that we have to put in there. And we would have to put the word null. Null means, hey, leave this one blank. Null. So that's obviously a bit annoying. In Adam, it's a little bit easier because we can do something like this. <laughs> this is tedious. I don't think it's having to type in null. And there we go. We just made a bunch of nulls. Isn't that magical? There aren't that many. Shall we go out to the documentation and see how many nulls we have to uh, put in? So we'll go to the Zim site now, into the docs. And one thing I didn't show you with the documentation, which is handy, is you can just search for it. So if we put in drag, like that and hit enter, it pulls up the drag. So now we count. The first one's a rectangle, followed by what cursor to use when you're hovering over it, followed by what rectangle you use, or <laughs> sorry, not what rectangle, but cursor, <laughs> what cursor to use when you're, um, when you're actually dragging it. A current target is whether you want to drag individual things in a container or all of the container whether it should swipe, local bounds, there's on top. So one, two, three, four, five, six. On top is the seventh parameter. All right. So if we 
come back here on top is the seventh parameter one two three four five six seven oh that should be on top false so we didn't have to do that many but there are times when you have to do that many now don't worry I know this looks like a pain. I'm going to show you an easier way, okay? But first I want to show you the hard way. Isn't that nice? Uh, show you the hard way first. These spaces don't really matter. It's just a matter of uh, my convention, personal preferences that I usually leave spaces between the, you know, the comma and the next parameter. Okay, so circle.drag, now it will not come up on top. So this is on top is false. Okay, let's try it. We refresh here. There's the circle, and as I drag it, now when I pick it up, the circle does not come up onto the top, which is a little odd. Can you see why that's odd? Watch. My finger, it's like the circle goes behind, but my finger, which is supposed to be picking up the circle, is now in front. <laughs> so it's, it's not the best, and usually we don't do that, but there are times when we need to move a background or something, and then we, you know, we, we put up with this minor issue. Okay, so good. That was the, uh, the hard way, we'll call it, or it's also the conventional way or the traditional way. In the JavaScript programming language, this is really the only way, as far as I know, to, um, by default, pass in parameters. However, there is another possibility, and this other possibility is, is used by Zim, and it is that we can pass in a single uh, object literal, or a configuration object. So that looks like this circle dot drag and in round brackets why don't we comment that out and in the round brackets we pass in a single configuration object that's easier than it sounds <laughs> configuration object sounds complex but that's all it is a pair of squiggly brackets and that's called an object literal so squiggly brackets are called an object literal the word literal means, just as it does in English, literally, that's what it is, okay? Here is a string literal. Well, hello. Okay, that is a string literal. Here is a number literal, seven. Those are called uh, well, a string literal. And this one is a uh, number literal. As a matter of fact, let's capitalize those. I usually do, I just forgot this time. Because these things, the seven, the hello, and the object literal, those are made from classes. So that's the object class, this is the string class, and oops, <laughs> and that is the number class. And remember, our classes start with capital letters. Now there's more as well. There's a thing called an array class, etc. But we are an array uh, literal. Um, the other way of doing this is to say, give me a new. Remember when we make an object from a class, we usually use the new keyword. So give me a new string, round brackets, and then we put the string in there. Hello. Okay. This is the same as saying quote hello. Well, maybe I'll, uh, I'll leave the comments on there. Okay, and then new number seven is the same as saying seven. Obviously, it's a bit shorter just to use the literal. So this makes a new string object, but so does this. Okay, that is the string literal object. Okay, or a, a, a string object made from a string literal. Don't know if that's complex. Uh, this one is the object literal. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's an object made from the object class, so that would just be new object like that. And the funny thing is, is we actually pass in, uh, if we wanted to put a property in the object such as um, uh, age colon 10, like that, that would be us passing in a property on this new object. 
Ooh, all this stuff is very code zero, isn't it? Hmm. Let's see. But it's 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 the code zero of uh, the natural JavaScript language. So what we were doing first, as a matter of fact, why don't we come back to this later? All right. I just want to use some of this. That's why uh, I introduced it. I want to use an object right now. But what I would prefer to do with code zero is just get us putting some things on the stage so that we can see them. And then as we progress in code zero, we'll come back and we'll take a look at the, the basics of programming which is important, but it's not necessarily as visual and therefore sometimes not as much fun to see initially. And Code Zero is set up for people, perhaps like you, who are looking at code for the first time. And I think it helps to see visual things when doing that rather than only dealing with numbers and <laughs> stuff like that. So let's um, get back to where we were. We were wanting to drag we were wanting to get to on top. So the issue is we don't want to go null, 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 false every time, you know, that kind of thing. And there's all sorts of things. If we wanted to make a rectangle with rounded corners, we just have to say, we want to set the corner to zero, the parameter for the corner. And that parameter is four or five over. And we'd have to go, okay, here's my rectangle, but then I have to go null, 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 and get to my corner of zero. And, and that becomes almost unmanageable. So Zim, in Zim2, introduced the Zim Duo technique, because Zim2 was actually called Zim Duo. So this is the Zim Duo technique. You can pass in parameters normally, or you can pass in a single configuration object that has properties that match the parameter. So now that we're using an object like that, or an object literal, we need to put properties in there. And the one we want is the on top property. Then we use a colon, and then we say it's value. False. There we go. So what this is doing is it's saying, don't worry about the order. You can just say the property name and its value. Hey, isn't that great? And if we wanted to do another one, we would put in a comma and we use some other property name. There was the drag cursor or something like that. And we can say that that is equal to, uh, I think none or default, default I think it is. Okay, and then our cursor when we're dragging would just be a normal default cursor. I believe that's what it's called. You still need to remember what the property names are called, and I haven't used a drag cursor in ages, so because <laughs> I use the default. We go back here, drag cursor is the name of it. So we used on top, we've used drag cursor. You could specify any of the other ones here as well. If slide, slide is set to true or not to true, so you could, we could make it slide, so we're sort of throwing the circle. All right, and these parameters you can read about down here. So here's slide. By default, the slide is false, so it will let you throw the object, okay? So if we wanted to set that to back to true, or sorry, to true, we would have to say slide true. Shall we see that? Where did our code go? Here's another one. So when we have another property to add, we go comma, slide, oops, slide, colon, true. Now you might be wondering, we've got false that doesn't have a string or a quote. We've got uh, quotes and we've got, uh, you know, when do we use quotes and when don't we use quotes? Were you wondering that? Well, it turns out that false and true are Boolean literals. So these are called Boolean literals. That is to say, they're um, the values, a uh, Boolean value of false and true, and they don't get strings. So they're not a string object. So this is a string literal, and this is a Boolean. Okay, and you just have to get used to some of these things. So let's save that up and see what happens when we um, go to drag. Oh, did you see the cursor though? Watch, when I go over it, whoop, it's this finger, but as soon as I start dragging, it's no longer the finger, so, so that changed that. So we really just want the on 
um, the on top. So I refresh here and the on top is false. Actually, I didn't even care about that. I just noticed it because we put the the dial on the circle. Okay, so are you ready to go back to the dial? <laughs> Which is what we were really wanting to get to. And perhaps we should put that dial somewhere else. How about up here? Okay, we'll put the dial up in the corner. So that's our dragging of the circle. Here we have the dial. We've centered it on the stage. If we don't need to center something, we can also add it just with an add to. That's a different method that does something similar. It adds it to the stage still, like center does, but center centers it and add to does not. So if we just use the add to the stage, you'll see that the dial goes to position zero, zero. So we refresh here and it won't look very good because the dial being round, we put the registration point in the middle. That means that's that's where it gets placed. So that's not very handy for us to have a dial up there. <laughs> because that's like a sundial. <laughs> the little sun in the corner. Sundial. <laughs> okay, so we want to then move that into here. Now we don't have to drag it. I mean, we could put a drag on it and let people drag their dial. But that's, that's not what we want to do. We just want to move the dial. Now there's two ways that we primarily move, or know, actually more. We could use the X and Y property. That's sort of um, the traditional way, I guess. We would say dial.x is equal to, how about uh, 200? And dial.y is equal to 200. Okay, so we refresh that. And there she be. Uh, if we're going to make the circle bigger, that might be a touch close, because as the circle gets bigger, it might hit the dial. Why don't we move it up just a little bit? So we go um, back in the X and up in the Y. Remember, we've just taken away 100. Uh, y starts at 0 in the top left corner and gets bigger going down. So there we go. We've got a dial up in the corner. That's one way that we can position it. This code zero is getting a little bit lengthy, I think. We've talked about a lot of important things in it as well. So the other ways, I'll, I'll just keep it simple. The other ways have, have a use, and as a matter of fact, when I code, I usually use the other way, and perhaps we can address that in the next code zero, um, and it's a thing called chaining. But um, like I said, we'll, we'll get to that later. We could pose. We could have said dial.pose for position, and we could say 100 comma 100. So in this case, we're using a method. The method has round brackets to position the dial. So either use the X or the Y. There's also a different type of positioning. That's, that's an absolute position, so from 0, 0. There's also dial.mov, move, and we could say move it over 100 and move it uh, down 100. This would um, just move it, but it moves it from wherever it is. So, oh, as a matter of fact, this is a bit different because we've already positioned the dial at 100, 100. And then if we ask to move it, it moves it 100 more and 100 more. So now it would be at position 200, 200. We'll leave those for later. Um, there's a certain advantage to using these that we'll deal with. It allows us to chain them onto objects. But like I said, perhaps we'll look at that uh, next time. So we've got this dial. What we're really wanting to do is get to that change method and change the radius of the circle, or the, sorry, the change event. So here we are. We say dial.on. We say that we want to uh, capture when it changes. And then we call the function. Well, we don't call it. We say what function to call right there when the dial changes. Now, tell you what we'll do. Let's just, uh, as I mentioned, this one's getting quite lengthy. And events like this are very important, and we use them a lot. So that's another thing that we should leave for um, another code zero. But let's just get it to work. It doesn't take too long to get it to work, but it will take a little bit to describe all of this properly if we're here in code zero. So in the dial change uh, function, we can say circle dot radius is equal to the 
dial dot current value. Comment that out for a second and let's see what the dial uh, we will zog. Zog logs to the console dial dot current value. Okay, so um, Zog is a nice way to tell us information that we want to know as, as coders, as we, as we code. Um, we might want to know some things about our variables or about our properties, and we use the console over on the right-hand side to, to use that console. You can hit F12 and then look for the console. So the function key F12 um, should bring up your console. We already brought it up here. Uh, refresh. So now I change as I change the dial. Can you see that? Look, it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to ten, and then the dial stops and we come back to zero. So that's going to be pretty big. If we change the scale of the, the circle, it'll be ten times as big. It's going to go huge. So really, maybe we should change our dial up a little bit. Um, Right in here, we can say the min and the max. So we'll keep the minimum of zero. That means it'll disappear. The maximum we can set, say, is three times as big. And then the step. If we say zero for the step, it will uh, it will go up in little, really, really, really small amounts. Okay. Right now, the default of the step is one. And that means our scale would be 0, 1, 2, or 3, which may not be terribly exciting. <laughs> okay, so if we if we say we could go smaller, we could say 0. 0.1, and then it, the scale would go up in 0. 0.1. But if we say 0 here, then it's analog. It just kind of goes up long decimal numbers. So we refresh here. And now when I do that, you see there's, there, there are those long decimal numbers. And it's so the scale's going up more slowly, and it arrives at 2.99 or you know whatever three basically. So let's uh, try um, the second part of that, where we actually set the radius uh, to that. Oh, we're not doing the scale. <laughs> Forget about the scale. We will do the radius, and that means we can go from how about a bigger radius? What do we start at? We started at 50. We'll just start at 50, and we'll go to mm, 300. Okay, if we didn't put the zero there, we would get our little ticks, and 50 to 300 would be a heck of a lot of ticks. Do you want to see? Yeah, well, we'll see what it looks like now. Now that we've set steps of zero, it doesn't try and put the ticks in. And there they go. Now there's a little jump at the beginning. Well, I'll refresh that and watch. As soon as I click, we started at 50 and I think the circle's at 100. But look, that's that's working. We're still uh, zogging, which we don't need. But look at that. We're using the dial, click, 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 the dial to change the radius of the circle. Cool. Here's what it would look like if we left the one in there. I'll refresh here. <laughs> Look at that. Those are the ticks around the dial. It kind of looks a bit sci-fi. I sort of like it. Um, we can limit it and we could say go up by 10. So now we're doing steps of 10. So we're playing with the parameters and that's a little bit easier on the eye. So we're going steps of 10. The one thing that's a bit annoying still is that jump. So there it is uh, probably starting at 100 and yet as soon as we move this it's at 50 or whatever, 55 or <laughs> whatever we went, 60 to we go, steps of 10. And so that jump looks a little bit awkward. Um, the way to fix that is just to start off the dial. So what we can do here is say dial dot current value is equal to the circle radius dot radius. So it works both ways. We can ask for the current value of the dial but we can also set the current value of the dial. So if we don't want the dial to jump, we've got a choice. We could uh, look at this and say, that's starting at 50. So therefore, we will make our circle start at 50. That would be one way. The other way is to say, hey, the circle is starting at 100 in the radius, so please set my dial's current value to that 100. So we save that and come in here, and now our dial is starting at 100, so I guess if that's 50, this is 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, right? And so when we pick this up and move it, 
it doesn't jump like it did before. Okay, I think that's a pretty successful place to stop. So what we'll do is we'll do a code zero where we come back to the event and talk more specifically about the event. We also want to talk about this thing called chain, uh, which we're not doing yet, so I won't put it there. So we'll talk about events and chaining in the next code zero. Oh, well done. Have a watch of that again. If anything in there was um, too much for you, uh, I know we jumped around a little bit, but we did see some very important things in this code zero. Uh, we did indeed. We talked about uh, when code runs. It runs inside of these squiggly brackets. And in future ones, we'll talk about these basic programming elements to help us do logic. But these things help us do logic and build a bigger application. Right now, we're just we're just getting started. We're putting things on stage. We're talking about viewing the assets. And we also talked about how to configure the objects with a configuration object. Okay, so that was kind of important. And in doing so, in introducing the configuration object, we had to talk about these object literals, or ways that we make objects from classes, different ways. We can use the new keyword, or sometimes we can use a literal like that, which is for our, our basic programming elements, the literal is usually faster. As a matter of fact, most people when they code don't even know that seven is an object and don't even know that seven can be made with a new number. <laughs> you know, so now you are seeing the code zero basics of coding as well, but we'll come back to that um, type of thing a little bit later. Okay. So there you go. That was our code zero. Uh, have a great day from Dr. Abstract and Pragma and look forward to more code zeros. All the best. Ciao.